Hi, I'm Dale Weiner, head football coach at Catholic High School in Baton Rouge. And this video series is about our spin offensive package. Uh, this may be something that you want to go to as your complete offense, or maybe just part of a total comprehensive offense. Uh, one of the things that we have found out is that, just like any offense during the course of a season, we're going to be seeing a lot of different defensive looks. One of the defensive looks that we see is the 5-2, or perhaps somebody might refer to it as the 3-4 defense. And this is what this video is about, how to attack the 5-2 defense with the spin offense. The spin offense starts with the spin sweep, and all of the other plays kind of come off of uh, play actions that simulate that spin sweep. So we're going to look at the spin sweep first versus the 5-2 defense. For our example here, we're going to look at spin sweep right. And what that means is our left slot will need to go in motion because he's the ball carrier one count ahead of the actual snap count. He will go in fast motion and we want this guy at top speed when he gets that handoff from the quarterback, very similar to the jet sweep out of the wing T offense. He heads for the near hip of the quarterback and then he's going to stay on his path and run that sweep around the outside. The quarterback is going to jab step with the right foot, use it to spin off the ball of the foot, come completely around, hand that ball off, and we want him to continue into the B gap to carry out a fake because as the guys that play us know, that quarterback's going to keep the ball on that action a lot of times. So we have him handing off and heading into the line of scrimmage here. The linemen are going to execute the following blocks. The play side tackle is going to reach and cut off his, his tackle that's on him, get that helmet to the outside and drive him inside. We're going to ask our play side guard uh, to pull and as soon as you can turn up, you turn up. It could be immediately outside of the tackle's block. It could be outside of the defensive end. But as soon as he can turn up, he's going to turn up to help catch that pursuing linebacker that's scraping to the outside. The uh, offensive center will zone step here and he has a zone block coming up with his, with his guard to his backside. And so what will happen is if they have some type of X stunt going here or some type of slant where the nose is going to the backside, that guard will take over that block and the center will work up field to the next level. But he's zoning here, and these two are working up to that backside linebacker. The backside tackle will also zone step and cut off that tackle, engage him, and then he can go ahead and work up feel after that because we don't think that that guy is going to be a factor in the play to a sweep to the right. We want him to get onto him, but he can work up feel also in this zone concept. The outside receiver will push at his corner and then crack on the near safety. The slot back is going to arc release and go to the play side corner. So you can see what's developing here. We have a crack and a, and a arc release stop block by the slot. So we're really creating an alley for this running back. The fullback will load block the defensive end. He will be going at that end trying to get his helmet across his outside hip. And the backside receiver will push his corner off and try to get in the face of that uh, near side safety on his side of the field. This play opens up an alley on the perimeter and he is going to key these perimeter blocks and he can cut it up in the alley or if that corner gets caught inside he can dip his shoulders and go to the outside and down the sideline. Now there is an alternative blocking scheme that sometimes we'll use. If we don't think that we have a good shot here at getting this fullback outside leverage on the defensive end, maybe he's a great player, or maybe during the course of the game we've, we've seen that the way they're playing this, they're really flat in that defensive end. You know, if somebody's referring to this as the 3-4, the outside linebacker, they're really flattening that defender out to be a, a, a guy that contains and just won't let us outside. If that's going on, then this is going to be a strict zone block principle, almost like a stretch play. And now we're going to take the slot and he's going to help because he does have pretty good situation here from his alignment on that defensive end. And now everybody is going to zone. And what may happen is when we do zone, we may wind up 
pulling this guard around working this way to get outside but the thing is in that zone principle these two guys are going to work and rub off so that one of them works to that next level to get that pursuing linebacker it's a zone concept now when that happens of course we've lost the arc release by the right slot and so it's a switch situation with the fullback in the slot we're still going to push off crack to the near side uh, safety by the wide receiver and now the fullback becomes the flat arc release uh, blocker on that corner that's a great scheme and sometimes it times up even better than having the slot arc release because when he gets this handoff from the quarterback he's right off of the hip of that fullback and he might be able to make an even quicker cut based on the blocking of the fullback so this is an alternative blocking scheme uh, to this spin sweep and we found this to be an effective adjustment when we're facing this type of defense. A great complementary play to the spin sweep is the spin reverse. This takes advantage of those teams that are really fast flowing to the action of the sweep and getting a lot of people to the point of attack and so what we try to do is counter that by coming back with the spin reverse. Let's look at spin reverse left versus the 5-2 defense. Here on spin uh, reverse left, we're going to fake the spin sweep right. So that means our left slot back is going in motion, carrying out that spin sweep fake. But this time, he's going to gain just a little bit of depth to bring this back so that he doesn't collide with the right slot when he executes the reverse. The quarterback will jab step, pivot, come around and fake that uh, sweep. And one of the things I want to stress on this, all these play actions by the quarterback, is that he stays in a low athletic position and really uh, hides that football from the defense. The right slot now is coming at the snap of the ball and he's heading for this handoff behind the quarterback but underneath the arc of the left slot and he's going to be carrying out that reverse to the left side. Our play side wide out will push at his guy and then go to the near safety uh, on this reverse play. If you'll notice our fullback is to the right. We always want the fullback opposite the side of the reverse. It's a key breaker and it also uh, times up well with the blocking of this play. He will jab step to the right and now he is coming uh, down to the uh, cornerback, I'm sorry, to the defensive end on the left side. And this is not the easiest block in the world, but it's a load block like we've asked him to do on the sweep to his side. We will now base block this defensive tackle with our left tackle and it's an outside technique we want him to kind of zone step get and work the helmet to the outside and right here we have this uh, defense uh, this uh, offensive guard also go straight at that linebacker because we think of the spin sweep fake he's probably taking a slide step or at least maybe even be in pursuit to the sweep to the right so we ought to have a good shot at squaring up and hitting this guy straight up working that helmet to the outside the center on this play will base block that nose guard and push him to the right the backside uh, tackle is going to zone step cut this tackle off and stay with him and we're going to pull the backside guard and when the backside guard pulls he's coming flat down the line and he's going to attack the cornerback now the quarterback, as you know, will oftentimes run the ball either in the A, B, or C gaps on the spin blast play. Well, we want him to more or less fill for this pulling guard as he spins, keeps it tight, and he fills and he heads up to the uh, linebacker. Because of the fact that when we do run the spin blast, we fake the reverse, it does not automatically send people to the back side when this right slot comes around because this is the exact same action as our spin blast play where the quarterback's keeping the ball. So we think a lot of times this linebacker is going to stay at home. Remember the first action that he saw was actually the spin sweep fake going to the right. Our backside receiver will push and he will now go for the safety on that side. This is the spin reverse left 
with the right slot getting the ball and he gets it uh, to take advantage of the cross blocking action of the crack on the uh, safety and the flat release down the line by the guard out on the cornerback. What we've found is when we face teams like this and, and we have faced teams that just have outstanding defensive ends that's a real tough block for our fullback it's kind of hard to ask him to to execute that block then we go to an alternative and the alternative of course is to kind of switch our formation and then on one of our previous videos where we introduced the spin offense and we talked about the multiple formations you can run this this offense from we looked at the nasty slot and we will call nasty on this we'll compress that that double slot into a nasty slot so that the the uh, wide receivers have the same split uh, uh, from the slot as the slot has from the tackle. And we'll bring that down to about one yard splits, one yard from the end to the slot, one yard from the slot to the tackle. And now we'll ask, instead of cracking on a safety, we'll ask this guy to come hard down and push that defensive end down. And because our slot is really lined up where a tight end would be except he's just in the backfield and so they typically will line up on the slot like they would line up on a, de on a defense uh, or on a tight end rather. And so now we get this scheme and so when the fullback comes around he switches assignments with the guard. He is now the lead blocker on the corner and when the guard pulls he turns up the field and he goes to that safety there. And so we can still run this play with an alternative blocking scheme simply by compressing that slot down into a nasty slot. And when he goes in motion, we still want that quarterback to hit it tight and fill in over the guard hole because he will fill on that linebacker when he does this. This is an alternative blocking scheme to the spin reverse against the 5-2 defense. Now we want to look at a great running play for our quarterback and if you have an athletic, a good running running qu uh, quarterback, boy this is a great play to complement the spin sweep. This is our spin blast. Now if we were going to run the spin blast and stay with the blast concept which I explained on a previous video uh, which involves a kick out by the fullback and pulling the backside guard through which teams that run the I formation have been doing for years. If we really want to stay with the blast blocking scheme, we probably would employ a tight end. This is one of the many formations that we can run out of our spin offense that we, we talked about in our introductory uh, uh, video about inter, uh, you know, defining what the spin offense was and how we use it. And we would come in probably with a tight end and a slot to the opposite side, so you'd have a wing slot. We could go to the double wing teams that are very comfortable, and that's their base offense, the double wing offense. They could certainly do this. So if we were going to run the spin blast against the 5-2 using the tight end, this is how it would look. First, we're going to fake the spin sweep right on a spin blast right. The left slot goes in motion, carries out that sweep fake, and we really want him to carry that fake out because that pulls people out to the outside. One of the things that we've pointed out in previous videos is that a lot of times defenses that are facing the spin have to play assignment football much the same as they do when they're facing an option football team. So he's going to pull that defense out on that spin sweep fake. Now at the same time we want the right slot to fake the reverse. So now we've got both slots going in the opposite directions. As we said, blast in our terminology means the fullback is going to kick out and the tight end is now down blocking. And so what he will be doing is executing a combo with the tackle to the inside backer. If that backer is stepping up and trying to play hard, maybe go through the uh, B gap on a stunt, of course that tackle will come off and pick that up and the tight end takes over the tackle's block. It's a true combo scheme. Same thing is happening here with the play side guard and center to the backside backer. Comboing to the backside backer. If he were to blitz through the backside A gap, center comes off the nose, picks him up, and the guard takes over that block. Now we're pulling the backside guard leading up into the hole 
he may be sealing inside or he may be going straight on to that safety. Remember, because we initially faked the spin sweep, it's not uh, uncommon to have this guy playing a hard corner with him funneling uh, inside out to take away that sweep. And we may bust it right through there. The quarterback, oh, and let me go back, and the backside tackle is zone stepping and cutting off any penetration from the man over him. The quarterback is jab step with that right foot spun and faked the sweep. Here comes the reverse and he really doesn't have to pause to fake that. The timing of this play is such that if he pauses enough to fake the sweep, slows down just enough to mesh with that guy on the sweep, he doesn't have to fake anything to this guy because they are crisscrossing at about the same time. It's simply enough to turn his back to the defense and hide the football from them so they can't see it and then keep going and stay right underneath that kick out block. One of the important things on this is the pivot by the quarterback. If the quarterback simply turns and doesn't jab step forward and pivot, he will swing this out too wide and he'll wind up kind of on a path that's heading this way and then he has to cut and that takes too much time and that takes away from the effectiveness of the play. The backside wide receiver is pushing and trying to get his helmet across the safety. So if we were going to stay strictly with the blast uh, concept, we would probably bring that tight end down in here in a, in a wing set and execute it this way. However, we can stay with the spin blast in our double slot, but we will simply change it to the spin wham. And we talked about this in a previous video when we were talking about attacking the 4-4 defense. Now all the action is the exact same. You have on spin wham right, a fake of the spin sweep left, a fake of the reverse, I'm sorry, spin sweep right, a fake of the spin reverse left. The wideouts each will push to their near safety after they make their corners retreat. They attack the corners and then go to the, to the uh, safeties. But now we've got wham blocking, it's an ISO play and our quarterback has just become a tailback in the eye. He's going to jab step, make that spin, come around, and now we've got base blocking here. We can either base block across the board like this with a lead blocker of the fullback, or we can, as many teams do that run ISOs, we can combo down to the backside backer, nose to the, to the backer, or if we think we've got the backside secure, we can out out. And that means we can have the guard block out, tackle block out, and now it's an ISO here with these guys just base blocking the backside. There's so many variations of how you would block that based on the way you do things in your offense. One of the keys, I think, if you go to the spin offensive package and incorporate it in what you do, don't get away from your current blocking schemes. Just adapt those schemes to the spin offense. All this really is, is an ISO play where the quarterback keeps it instead of a tailback. And so if, if you want to block them in any number of ways, you can do that. Um, it's very important to try to tie all this in with how you already do things. If we wanted to stay in the double slot and run the spin blast action, we would convert that spin blast to what we would call the spin wham. And we would ISO that uh, play onto the linebacker. If we wanted to go and stay with spin blast concepts and blocking schemes, we probably would bring a tight end into the game to take advantage of his uh, additional blocking down and comboing down to the inside. That is our spin blast against the 5-2 defense. For those teams that, as they defend us, are really worried about containing and making us uh, go inside because they're going to take away the sweeps and the reverses, the spin counter is a great alternative because not only does it hit underneath in the tackle area, the B or C gaps, but it's also misdirection. So it gets the linebackers flowing the wrong way and kind of breaks up some of those reads. We're going to look at the spin counter versus the 5-2 defense. 
Now one of the things that we might be doing when we actually run the spin counter uh, against the 5-2 is breaking the formation from the double slot maybe to the double wing or to the wing and slot. I'm going to show you the double wing look against the 5-2 and I think this really helps us uh, do some things that we like to do against this. We're going to swap some blocking assignments on this because typically if you use the word counter in our offense uh, we mean we're going to pull guard and tackle but it could also mean some other things and what we're going to do is we're going to get the fullback involved and we're going to run a, a counter blocking scheme that has the fullback as a lead blocker. If we're going to run the spin counter left in this double wing set and use that fullback as a lead blocker, we're going to do it this way. We're going to fake, of course, the sweep right to give that initial read that we're running the spin sweep right. Then what we're going to do is, on the play side, because the left is now our play side, we're going to execute a couple of combo packages here. We're going to go with the uh, tight end and the tackle executing a combo from the defensive tackle to the linebacker. And we're also going to have a uh, combo between the left guard and the center who are going to work these two back to the backside linebacker. So you've got a, a tandem blocking scheme where you've got these two working on those two. You've got these two here, center and guard, working on those two. Now we're going to have our fullback jab step to the right and we've got him opposite of the direction of the play and we're going to jab step to the right and now he's coming down hard to be a kick out blocker on this end and of course this is kind of like his assignment in the blast play and I got to tell you in our terminology what we would probably do even though this is a spin counter play for the backs we would probably actually change the name of this play when we're in the double wing and call it the counter blast. The word counter now tells the backs, yeah, you're executing spin counter, but because we tagged it with the word blast, it tells the lineman, oh, this is the blast play. And our blast play has the tight end blocking down in tandem with the tackle, and we have a kick out by the fullback. And now because you did have the word counter on this blast, the guard will now pull and lead up into the hole. So this is the same blocking scheme if we were running the blast, fullback kicks out, backside guard pulls through, but it's counter blast. So we need the fullback to the backside and the backs are going to execute the spin counter play. He fakes uh, the sweep to the right, the left slot does, the quarterback of course jab steps, pivots, comes around underneath now this guy here is zone blocking, cutting off the tackle to that side and the end tight end on the back side is cutting off that defender on him. Here the right slot drop steps, crosses over and comes underneath to get the football coming this way. And here we have the spin counter because the quarterback is now going to hand off underneath on the spin counter play, it's not behind the quarterback, but in front of the quarterback, and then keep that flow going in the direction of the spin sweep play. So we would actually shift that spin counter into a counter blast if we were running double tight end versus the 5-2. If we wanted to stay with the double slot, probably what we would ca uh, call this play is counter trap. The word counter tells the backs that we're still running spin counter but it's a trap play and so we would probably look at it like this we would probably have our nose base blocking on the uh, nose guard here we would probably have the play side guard base block on this linebacker here and because we faked the spin sweep we think we're going to get this guy playing it pretty honestly he may even be flowing to that uh, sweep flow that we've given him here we're going to have this uh, tackle right here come down uh, or rather block out on the defensive end out here and push him out of the play. Now this gives him kind of a false read. It's kind of a, uh, a, a false key for that guy. He may want to widen out, may be able to run up the field, but probably he wouldn't be pinching in because it's an outside release and it sets up a trap on this guy by our guard. He's pulling through here trapping this uh, defensive tackle. The right tackle zone steps cuts him off. The fullback can go ahead and fill through here and that protects that area there in case there's a run through by the linebacker. 
quarterback, of course, jab steps, pivots around, hands the ball underneath on the counter type look right here to that uh, right slot back. And then he continues after the handoff in this direction. We want both wideouts to push and go for the safeties on their side. And if we can pop it through the line of scrimmage here, boy, we've got a downfield block going on in that safety right there. So this spin counterplay against a 5-2 is going to probably change names. If we go to the tight end look, it's probably a counter blast. If we go and stay in the double slot, it's probably a counter trap. And that's how we would block this and uh, execute this play against the 5-2 defense. With all the different looks that we've gotten uh, over the years running the spin offense, uh, we have a lot of movement in the secondary, uh, linebacker scraping to take away the outside running plays, king slot backs, king motion, whatever. And one of the things that's been highly effective for us is to hit people with the spin dive. It's simply a midline dive, direct snap to the fullback with a lot of play action going on behind him in the, in the backfield. And we have broken some long runs on a very simple dive play. Now let's look at this dive play against the 5-2. There's a couple of ways that you can block this against a 5-2 defense. First, of course, is just the basic hat on a hat, man on man blocking. With the fullback aligned in the right A gap, we'll kick the left slot in motion and he's gonna be going full tilt and faking that spin sweep, carrying out that fake. Uh, tucking an imaginary football and really running hard to the outside. We're going to have the right slot come back on the reverse underneath his uh, left slot's arc and run the reverse this way. Of course, we're going to have the quarterback jab step with his right foot, pivot, and come around and head to the uh, outside B gap right here in this tackle area, and we want him running hard, shoulders forward, looking like the spin blast. This, of course, this action is spin blast for us. You've got a sweep fake, you have a reverse fake, you've got a quarterback off tackle on the blast play. So they're getting all of these backfield actions on this play. We want both receivers pushing on their guys and heading to the middle safeties which they do often on our spin offensive plays. And now we want base blocking up front. Good splits, man on man, put a hat on a hat, drive those guys out. Uh, as you know, there's no telling if the defense is going to play base, if they're going to stun, if they're going to slant. The main thing is get on your guy and keep the feet moving. Now the fullback who has aligned himself in the right A gap about a foot and a half in front of the quarterback and our quarterback literally can reach out and touch uh, the back hip of the fullback. That's how close they are to each other. He's going to intercept that snap. He's going to take that direct snap and now he's heading right into the cylinder and he's just going to read the blocking. Uh, obviously in a 5-2 defense he's going to primarily cut off the block of the center on the nose guard and he can either stay straight, he can cut it to the left, or cut it to the right. Now that's about as simple as it gets on a base dive play. But with all this backfill action, it is a surprisingly deceptive play. And many times, we've actually had the fullback take the ball, be running into the line of scrimmage with linebackers running right by him uh, and not have a clue that he has the football. Another alternative scheme that you might want to use is just kind of a double fold block scheme. Uh, obviously, the center is going to stay on his guys, but what you could do down here is have out, out by the guards, drop step, and come on the linebackers here. This may be effective if you're finding those uh, oaky look teams or taking those tackles and pinching them down to take away that B gap, then you go ahead and block out with the guards, drop step, and get on the linebackers. And this may be a, an effective alternative on this base dive, this spin dive play against the 5-2 defense. As with most uh, offenses, there is an option possibility out of the spin offense. And this is a, this is a play that uh, could be highly effective against any defense. We're going to look at it against the 5-2 defense right now. Now, as in most uh, option plays that involve looking at a 5-2 defensive front, 
The pitch key is going to be this outside defensive end, or if you refer to your defense that looks like this, the 3-4, that would be an outside linebacker. We're going to look at spin option right. The left slot is going to become our pitch man, and so he's going to kick in fast motion right before the snap of the ball, and his aiming point is the same, but what's going to happen is <clears throat> as he reaches that aiming point, the near side hip of the, the quarterback, he's actually going to belly back slightly because he has to maintain a good pitch relationship with the quarterback. Our outside wide receiver is going to push at that corner, and now he's going down to the safety here. Our play side slot is going to arc release, and he's going to be the lead stop blocker on this corner. So that really looks like uh, perhaps uh, uh, an option play out of the wishbone or triple option type attack, double slot attack. We will now base block here and it's a zone concept. We're going to get those helmets on the outside of the people on us at the line of scrimmage. We're going to take a, a, a good zone step here. We're going to flat zone step and work up field. Remember, if these guys are pinching because we work a lot on our zone blocking in our offense, uh, he'll take over that block and, he, and this tackle will work to the next level here. Center zone blocking, tackle, uh, guard and tackle on the backside are zone blocking. Again, if there's any kind of slant, a backside stunt, uh, X or what have you going on with the nose and the backside linebacker, this guard will take over that nose guard and the center will work to the next level that way. So we've got the interior line with their zone blocking taking care of the, the inside interior of the defense. Now the fullback is going to head right on the outside hip of this tackle and he's also working upfield and what that's trying to do here is we've got a seal on this crack on the safety we got a seal with the fullback walling off pursuit maybe by linebackers that we didn't get to maybe they read it really quick uh, they were running they're just a lot better than us up front and so this takes care of another uh, uh, situation where we can pick up a further seal block with our fullback the quarterback jab steps pivots, comes around, and now he's attacking downhill at this pitch key. Now because we're faking the spin sweep, we may get a situation where this guy has really been drilled to be a contained guy and he works out like this. And of course if that happens, that quarterback is going to be very aggressive and take that ball and take advantage of these seal blocks inside. But if he flattens, stays on the line of scrimmage and turns on the quarterback, He's going to pitch that ball to our pitch back here, this left slot that went in motion. And so you really do have a double option. The quarterback could keep it or he could pitch it off. The backside wide receiver, of course, is working for the near side safety. This play really looks like a combination of lead option and maybe the twirly bird option that people run under center where he reverses out and runs down and kicks it off the, the end defender. This is our spin option versus the 5-2 defense. That concludes the running plays for the spin offense versus the 5-2. Now let me talk briefly just about our passing attack. We run the same passing scheme versus every defense that we see. As far as protection, we are using a zone concept. If we're running one of our spin pass rights, then all of the linemen are zone blocking to the right. Our left slot has come in motion to fake the sweep, but gets downhill very rapidly to help seal the outside. The fullback who aligns himself on the right A-gap jab steps, comes across and protects the backside. Essentially this becomes a seven-man protection. The quarterback fakes the sweep, pulls up here in about the B-gap area. And it doesn't matter what defense we face, we're going to use this blocking scheme on our spin passes. Now we have any number of routes. We have bootlegs. We have a screen. We've covered this in our spin passing game video and we hope you'll check that out. But the blocking scheme will never change regardless of the defensive front that we're facing. I hope you'll check out the other videos that we have. And next we're going to be looking at the spin offense versus the very popular 3-3-5 defense.